Y'all ready to do this? Everybody stand with me to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. And then we're going to drop to Psalm 105. Just two verses. Deuteronomy 7. Then Psalm chapter 105. When you got it, somebody shout, I got it. Thank you, Jesus. It reads, know therefore, verse 9. 7 and 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Oh my God. So 105 and 8. He that remembereth his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. I want to use as a title today's message, God will never stop doing good. God will never stop doing good. My daughter sent me that revelation and I said, it's time for me to take it to another level. God will never somebody shout, never God will never stop doing good. We all know some people that have stopped doing good. The world will stop doing good. Your friends will stop doing good. Even some of our parents will get tired and say, hey, you need to go get a job. Even your parents would, <laughs> would stop. Even angels in heaven can stop. There was one third of angels that stopped doing good and followed the devil and became demons. Even angels can stop doing good. But the Bible says that God will never stop doing good. Even into a thousand generations. If God stopped doing good, you'll be broken right now. If God stopped doing good, tears wouldn't stop flowing out of your eyes. If, star, if God stopped doing good, you would think about all the hell that you've been through and you would have a nervous breakdown. You would be a nervous wreck. If God stopped doing good, you wouldn't want to go anywhere out the house. You would be scared looking at the news. But you know, some way, somehow, God is going to fix whatever you go through. Because God never stops doing good. And people don't understand that. Doing good when you good, it's like a medicine. Doing good is like a medicine. When Kanita said something in Sunday school, she said, I feel good when I do good. Because when you good, it's like a medicine. When you bless people and help people and encourage people, it does something to you on the inside. That's why I don't understand how people could be Scrooges. I don't understand how people could be mean and bitter because that's a terrible life to live. Don't let anybody stop you, take you out of your character from being good because when you stop good, you make yourself messed up. Can I give you three reasons God would never stop doing good? Number one, he won't stop doing good because of the blood of his son. The blood of his son. In Hebrews 13 and 20, it says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. When we take communion, we say, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. The only reason God doesn't strike us down is because we covered by the blood. If God, if there was no blood of Jesus, God would see our sins. In the Old Testament, when God was getting ready to strike the firstborn of Egypt, God told the children of Israel, wipe the blood on your doorposts, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Some people, they mad, they upset, they don't understand why God is still blessing you. They think you ain't deserving. They think you shouldn't be blessed, but they forget about it's the blood. 
They forget that the blood is over you. They forget that the blood covers you. They forget God can't see your mess because of the blood. And my team, when she was concerned about her brother, what she said, this is, I'm saying she wasn't sure if he was going to heaven or not. And I said, that's something that we learned a long time ago that said, once saved, always saved. And the reason why once saved, because all it takes is the blood to hit you one time. All it takes is for the blood of Jesus to cover you one time. Just one time. He said the blood of Jesus was a much better sacrifice than the bloods of lambs and goats. Because in the Old Testament, the people had to do it annually. They had to annually bring the blood of the goats and make the sacrifice. But when Jesus died on the cross one time, that's about all it took is one time. One time. I said, did he get baptized? Was he ever baptized as a child? Because all it took was one time. And the blood has been applied. I don't want to hear about what he did. I don't want to care about how he lived. God won't stop doing good because he see the blood over the life. God gave me this revelation when I was 20 or 21 years old. It changed my life. It was that salvation, salvation is for eternity. Righteousness is for right now on earth. So don't confuse righteousness with eternity. Salvation in the blood of Jesus brings us into eternity. Righteousness brings us into blessings. There are two separate things. If you want the blessings, be righteous with the salvation. But if you just want to live like a dog, you can live like a dog. You ain't going to get the blessings of Jehovah Jireh. You can just live like a dog, but you're covered by the blood. God will never stop doing good because of the blood. If people understand the blood, how can you talk about somebody that's covered by the blood? The only way people talk about people and gossip about people is they forget about they're covered by the blood. <laughs> oh God. You cannot put your mouth on a person that's covered by the blood of the Lamb. So God will never stop doing good because of the blood of his son. Secondly, God would never stop doing good because of the bun with his seed. God has a bun with his seed. You look at how these parents, how y'all are connected with your children. There's just something about your seed that you just connected to. There's a bun. You heard me tell Ms. Away so often, boy, if my name was TJ or Zay, boy, I, I would, boy I'd be living like a superstar. I said, boy, TJ and Zay get everything they want. I said, boy, if my name was TJ and Zay, boy, ain't no telling where I'd be. I said, but there's a special bond when you have your children that sometimes you don't have with anybody else. So it's great. You can't get jealous over the bond. Tell somebody, don't get jealous because I'm bonding with God. Don't get jealous because there's a certain bond that God has with me. There's a certain bond that he has with his seed. There's a certain bond that he has with you, his baby. There's a certain bond that he has when you love him and when you pray to him and when you call on his name. There's a certain bond. That's about it. I have a bond with my father. Psalm 105 and 8. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. I said, a thousand generations. Look how heavy God is. This is front. Watch this. Most of us don't even know who our second cousins are. We don't know who our second cousin are. We don't know who our great granddaddy was. God said, a thousand generations. God know who your great, 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 great. He remembers your great, 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 great. He remembers their prayers. Some of us, our daddies would know good, but you had a praying great, 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 great,
great-great-granddad that you don't even know about. God said, I remember your great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-granddaddy that was good to everybody. <laughs> Somewhere in that thousand, you got somebody that was sold out to God. We couldn't be here if we didn't have somebody in that thousand. I knew Layla was special because I knew she had to have somebody in their thousand. I started asking down about her family. Who, who this, who that, who that, who that. I knew something because somebody, you got to have somebody in their thousand. God will remember y'all. Y'all special. Y'all in church because of somebody in their thousand. Somebody in their thousand of generations was calling on the name of the Lord. Now guess what's going to happen for your great, 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 great. Great, 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 great. You are establishing more blessings into the thousand. You better go on and, and, and do you a recording. I am the one that started these blessings off for you. You may see this 200 years from now, but I was your great, 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 great. And I'm the one that prayed you to existence. I pray that you be covered by the blood. You better go and start making your videos right now. Tell somebody, I'm great, baby. I'm great because I'm, I'm a part of the great, great. I'm a part. I'm a part of the great, great. I'm a part of the great, great. Most of us don't know most of our families, but God knows us down to a thousand generations. That's the bond he has with his seed. That's the bond he has with his seed. And watching Ricardo being over there holding his new grandbaby since Sunday school. He ain't let that baby go. That's a bond. But that's how much God's been holding some of us. He ain't let us go through the hell and the high water, through the sickness and the pain. He had not let us go. Not only the blood of his son, not only the bond of his seed, but the third reason God can't, stu can't stop doing good is because of the beauty of his supply. The beauty of his supply. This is what it said in Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now, that's, 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 that's a lot, y'all. That's all of your need. That means everybody in here. It's a beautiful thing. Some of us as parents know we, we, we can't just give everything. This child got to have some. And this child got to have some, and this child got to have some, and this child got to have some. But God said, I can supply for all my children. <laughs> my supply is so beautiful, all of my children. That's why I always tell people in business with us, I say, hey, y'all, we don't, we don't have to be jealous or hate on each other. That's enough for us all. <laughs> Harvey, it's enough for us all. Let's make this thing a success. It's enough for us all. It's enough wealth for us all to eat. If you don't deserve it, God doesn't put the 20 back in his safe. He just gives it to somebody else. Now, this is heavy. You better hear what I'm saying. Do I have some good people in here that understand that you're going to give regardless because it's in you to give. Even to the people you want to give to, when you find out they ain't good ground, I got to give to somebody. I just got to be a blessing. Here's the most underrated thought that's never been taught, number one. Here's the most underrated thought that's never been taught, Brother Kevin, number one. God has to give. God has to give. Get that in your spirit. God has to give. He cannot hold on to it. Deuteronomy 7 9. Know therefore that the Lord, He is God faithful, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love Him and keepeth His commandments to a thousand generations. He has to give. Who else can I bless since he's dead? Which great-grandson, which great-granddaughter can I give to now?
rich great 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 grandbaby can I bless now I have to give that's why David had to be blessed because his great grandfather Boaz he had to constantly give the line had to keep blessing God has to give it's your job to be that type of person that he want to give to He going to give to somebody. The old saints used to sing, Brother Matthews, Lord, when thou art calling, do not pass me by. They knew God's going to be calling somebody for a blessing. But they say, Lord, do not. See, I don't want God to pass me by. I don't want to be the one watching everybody else being blessed. I don't want to be an observer. I want to be a participator. So whatever I need to do to stand out before my daddy, I'm going to do it because I want him to bless me. Who else can God bless in your generation? Just have the kind of heart where you can make sure that you're going to be one of them people that's getting blessed. Because God got to bless somebody. I told Mr. Wade one of our vision partners, I said, Mr. Wade, I need you to go get a $100 Visa card, a Visa gift card. You know, we give a lot of cards. I said, go get a $100 gift card, Visa. And I texted again. I said, a Visa gift card. Visa. Visa, because there's a lot of gift cards. I said, bring me back a Visa gift card so I can bless one of our business associates with me. And she came in the office, and that thing said Cheesecake Factory. It said, I said, you know what? You can have it. I said, you can have it. She said, no, I don't want, I don't, no, I don't want it. I said, I said, Keisha, this is what we're going to do. I still need to get this woman a Visa gift card because I want her to spend some money. So she need a Visa gift card, but this is what I'm going to do. I said, one of them, we're going to use the food one for a Thanksgiving card. And since I ain't going to see the wife, we'll make her another card, get me a Christmas card. I couldn't keep it for myself because I'm a giver. I still had to give. God still has to give. I want you to understand that he would not be God if he did not give. You cannot be God without being a giver. You have to give. I still had to give. I, I couldn't keep it. I would choke off of if I tried to go to the cheesecake factory and eat something that was meant for somebody else. I would have had to give it to somebody. Mr. Wade texted me to Sarah. She said, you still got that $100 food gift card? <laughs> I, want, I, want to get, I want to buy some stuff with it. <laughs> I want to get, I said, well, too late. I gave her both of them. Man, Wade started scratching her head. She, she seen them boys. She get a little hungry. <laughs> she said, she said you, 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 you still got that? <laughs> she said, you still got that $100 uh, food gift card? I said, I gave her both of them cards. I'm going to give it. You got to give just like your daddy. I told Brother Harvey, said Brother Harvey, I, I called Brother Harvey today. I said, Brother Harvey, I want you to do something with me. I want you to come so, somewhere with me. He said, Pastor, I would, but I got to work. He said, I got to work. And that's what a husband does. A husband has to work. You want to give to your family. You got to take care of your family. He's a husband. I didn't expect anything less. He said, I got to work. And when I and me when he said that, I thought, who did I think about? Tiffany, his wife, his daughters. I thought about him taking care of his family because he's a giver. The Bible said a man that doesn't provide for his own house is worse than an infidel. Because it's something about being a husband. It's something about being a giver where you got to provide. It's in you. You just got to provide. It's you just got to do it. Can I give you three people that can testify that God will never stop doing good? 
three people that'll testify God would never stop doing good. Number one, Mephibosheth the cripple. Mephibosheth the cripple would testify. He was Saul's grandson, Jonathan's son. When the coup came, they was taking over the kingdom, and the nurse dropped him, and he had to hide in Lodabar. And people have forgotten all about him because that was a part of the hood you didn't go to. I tell you, boy, the mailman didn't go to Lodabar. The police, nine, call 911, they don't come to Lodabar. He was in Lodabar. But watch what happened, 2 Samuel 4 and 4. And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son who was lame on his feet when he was five years old when the tidings come of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled, and it came to pass that she made haste that he would fail and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. What happened? David asked his men, he said, is there anyone in the seed of Jonathan that I can do good to? And they said, there is one who is lame on his feet in Lodabar, and his name is Mephibosheth. God went and got that young man, brought him to David's house. David fed him continually for the rest of his life at the king's table. He said, what do you want with a dead dog such as me? He said, I'm crippled. I don't have anything but somebody in your past. God remembered somebody else in your family. He remembered the prayers, how close Jonathan was to David. And David said, I got to bless somebody. He said, I got to bless somebody. I got to bless somebody. I'm telling you that if you stay in position, God got to bless you. If you don't get an attitude, if you don't become bitter, if you don't become revengeful, if you stay pure in heart, God has to bless you. Secondly, Rahab the prostitute. She can testify. She was a prostitute, y'all. But in Joshua 21, and Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house. And harlot is another word for prostitute. The hooker named Rahab enlarged there. She hid the spies of Israel. Thousand years later, she's talked about in Hebrews 11 and 31. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. Everybody else gave up on the woman. She was Rahab the harlot. It makes no sense why God would send two spies to a harlot's house when he could have sent them to a saved girl's house. God could have sent the spies to a woman's house that read the Bible every day. God could have sent the spies to somebody's house that was a worshiper and a tither and a giver. He picked a prostitute. It don't make any sense why God would give this woman a chance. She wasn't an ex holly at the time she was a current Bible. None taxpaying harley. And God said, that's who I'm going to send them to. He could have sent it to spies to somebody's house that had 95.7 going on. They get to her house, she playing Mary Jane. I'm in love with Mary Jane. She's my main thing. She makes me feel all right. He makes my... He sent it to somebody that's playing Mary Jane. But before the spies left, the woman caught the Holy Ghost. The woman got saved. The woman got delivered. Because somebody in them thousand generations. Somebody in them thousand generations. 
God overlooked her mess and called her out because somebody in them thousand generations. When our, when our church members, when I knew it was church members, Sister, Sister uh, Christina, she was at New Member Dinner, and they was talking about, she was talking about um, the church next door. And I think she said she had twins in her family that, that her auntie's name are Mary and Martha. I said, who your grandmama? I said, who your grandmama? Because something got to be special about you. She said, my grandmama was heavy in church. I said, I already know. I know how God operates. That's why I was telling Lada's father, I, I said something special about you just as well because your granddaddy was a pastor and great granddaddy and great granddaddy. It just don't, it just in the blood. You can't help it. God will call us out out of a thousand generations. God didn't give up on Rahab because somebody back there in the past. You don't know who it was in your family. But you had a prayer and warrior in that thousand for you to be at church today. You had somebody that was on fire for the Lord. You had somebody that loved him. And they didn't have Facebook back then. And they didn't have YouTube back then. And they didn't have Twitter back then. But they had a prayer life. And they called on the Lord for you. That's why it don't make no sense why I'm here today. It don't make any sense why God chose me. It don't make any sense why God picked me. McDonough Walmart, she was a practicing Jehovah Witness. Next thing you know, she's on fire for the Lord. I don't make no sense, but God don't pick you. He's going to choose you because somebody connected to you loved the Lord, and he is going to have his way in your life. Thirdly, Lazarus, the dead man, can tell you. Lazarus, the dead man, can tell you. God won't stop doing good. <laughs> he won't stop. John 11, 43, and when he is thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he was a dead. He that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about a napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. Yo, is your situation dead? Is, is is your situation dead? Are you mad? Are you upset because your situation is dead? God ain't forgot you because it's dead. Help me minister to your neighbor since Mr. Rogers' neighborhood it just came out. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God ain't forgot you just because it's dead. God will resurrect that thing, and he will blow your mind. He will send a breakthrough. He will send a blessing. He will send a miracle. He will send a change. God will not forget about you just because it's dead. It don't even matter. <laughs> Lazarus said, I'm a witness. My situation was dead, but God brought it back to life. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But God will never stop doing good. Can I close by telling you three ways to take advantage of the goodness of God and or to exhibit his goodness? I'm going to give you three ways to take advantage of his goodness and or exhibit his goodness. Number one, you have to breathe his goodness. You have to breathe it. See, people take advantage of the breath that we breathe. In Genesis 2 and 7, it says, In the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breath, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Every breath you take is a sign of God's goodness. Sister Felicia has one of those pumps that some people have to have when they got asthma and and, and I've seen them, and, and I, I forgot to tell you to bring it today. And, and sometimes they have to apply it because they have trouble breathing. And they have to inhale. And sometimes they're out of breath, and they look like, <gasps> and they, they, they can't even breathe. If you ever watch that, if you ever watch somebody going through that in, in person, it makes you appreciate your next breath. 
it makes you a brief in Corey without his grills get scared. It should make you appreciate your next breath. We get so used to complaining that we forget every shape that we can breathe. That we can breathe. That we can breathe through our nostrils and inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale and in. Just your ability to breathe ought to be a hallelujah. Just your ability to breathe ought to be a thank you, Jesus. Just your ability to breathe ought to be enough right there, Shirley, for you to stand on your feet and say, but Lord, I thank you. Without air pump, I was on the phone with Felicia and the pharmacist called and they said to give her a month's supply of the breathing stuff, it was going to be $800. A month supply. 30 days. I wish somebody had a calculator. And you can average up $1,000 a month for how many months you've been alive. And you ain't had to pay a dime just to breathe. That woman said $800 on the phone. I started praying to her. I said, woman, in the name of Jesus... God's going to make you find a way. Everyone say, give me one second. Because I know how people are. When they think they, you got money, they're going to give you the highest prices. And when you start praying, they say, oh, they don't got nothing. Let me go and help them out. I said, woman, first I said, woman in the name of Jesus, God's going to touch your heart, and you're going to go back in the computer. Next thing you know, I can give y'all an eight-day supply for $20. I said, that sounds like the Holy Ghost to me. I said, I can breathe a lot better now. I can breathe a lot better. Man, stop. Every time somebody give you a, a first price, stop agreeing to it because you can afford it. They say, can I say a, a quick prayer right quick? I could be praying because, Lord, I said, hey, Lord, thank you that I can afford it. But she don't know that. I'm saying, but, Lord, even though I can afford it, I want to do something else with it, buddy. And God dropped it down to $20 for eight days. Just to breathe. You know how valuable a breath is. How valuable just to be able to breathe. We ought to be able to breathe. Is good. Just to be able to breathe is to say, Lord, you're good. So number one, breathe his goodness. Number two, you need to bring his goodness. Don't just tell me you're good and you never do good to anybody. Because you reap what you sow. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. You got to bring his goodness. The Bible said in Psalm 118, 26, Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. You got to bring his goodness Yesterday we had our, our little young boys to me and mentor group and, and it was just me, Timothy, and Joshua. They said, man, I got time to just, just, just spoil them. Let's, I said, man, let's, what y'all want to do, Tim? What you want to do? You, Tim, you right and you this and that. He's a movie. He's going to be able to the next Tyler Perry, you know, even bigger. He already got a book coming out. He's, he, he does video. He's in the saddle right now. I said, what you want to do? He said, let's go to the movies. So we checked the movie. Time's done. There's a 10 o'clock show on. We went. We stopped eating and went down to the movies. But in our, in our, in the, in the ride together, it was so much anointing in the car. It was so much goodness in the car. It felt like I was riding with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It was so, it was so good. I've been in the car with some folks that you can't wait to drop them off. You saying while you're driving, please, no red lights, no yield signs, no four-way stop sign. Let me take this person home. Let me get them out my presence. 
when they brought the goodness of the Lord with them, it felt like I was riding with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I feel, I said, man, don't y'all feel good? I said, Tim, this feels good. I said, man, this feels good. I said, man, I'm with some saved young men, and we love the Lord, and if there ain't nobody getting high, ain't nobody passing no blunt, ain't nobody got a ship one. We just high off the Holy Ghost. I said, it felt good. Being around good people feels good. Makes you feel good. There's a vibe in the atmosphere that you know the Lord is in this place. The Lord is in our presence. The Lord is in the midst of us. And it felt good. It felt good. But you got to bring it. You got to bring goodness with you. You can't fake it. It got to be a part of you. That's why it's very important for our church to be the best church by being good to each other. Just by being good. Just by doing good to each other. Just by loving each other real good. Just by supporting each other real good. Not backstabbing each other, not fighting each other, not talking about each other, but just by being good. Good God of Somebody shout, ain't he good? <laughs> lastly, not only bring his goodness, not only breathe his goodness, but lastly, you got to become his goodness. You, you got to become his goodness. Matthew 5 and 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. When people see your good works, when your light shine, they know it's a God. Because men and women, and as Kevin said, especially in Memphis, we're not naturally good people. We're not naturally good people. So when you are good, the light of God shines through you. And it touches hearts because being good is not common. Being thoughtful is not common. Being considerate is not common. One reason I was late coming back here to change clothes. Somebody, I guess they picked out a necktie for me or something. It had so many wrinkles in it. It looked like a wave of wrinkles. I said, Denise, when I get back, I, they, they had to. They reached down, they had iron board out, they had, they was double teaming it. I, hook it up. <laughs> they was straightening it out. I was saying to myself, I'm not saying to myself, I said, did they not see this fat wrinkle? Princess, you heard me laughing at me. I said, I said, did they not see this big fat wrinkle in my neck? You just got my clothes out the cleaner, the shirt iron, the jacket iron out the cleaner, and I got a big fat wrinkle. <laughs> the dog. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was. Okay. Now listen, this is the way I said, where is, I said, now, that's just, that's just consideration. It don't cost a dime to be considerate. It don't cost a dime to be courteous. It's just called thoughtfulness. But when you're really good, you're going to try to cover everything. You're going to try to, see, that's what made God so powerful about us. He covers everything for us. 
He covers our joy. He covers on our job. He covers us on our home. He covers us at church. We cover us when we're driving in the street, past a drunk driver, past a person that's texting, that's about to run into the back of you, but God make them look up so they don't run into the back of you and hurt you. God covers us when we're on the highway, the byways and hedges. He covers us from the food that we eat that got disease and germs in it. He's considerate. He's thoughtful over every place we go, over every step we take. He's considerate and mindful over everything we do because he's good. And if you are going to experience the good life, you got to be good. You got to treat people just as good as you want to be treated. Somebody stand on your feet and give the Lord a victory hand clap of praise. Jesus went to the cross and died for our sins.